So House Republicans are divided. I don't know how they're divided on this. Read the Constitution. Where do you find in the Constitution warrants, Pat? Uh, well, you got the Fourth Amendment, mm-hmm. uh, for Which instance. Is? Uh, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported mm-hmm. by oath mm-hmm. or affirmation. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. That's the Fourth Amendment. Yeah. What does that mean? The reason why this was written in is because the king used to issue general warrants. And that meant Mm. Pat Gray, there's something wrong with him. Go find it. And they could look into anything. They could go into your house, go through all of your papers, where a warrant, now our kind of warrant, has to be sworn out by the police and somebody else, you know, somebody tips them off. And they say, look, I know he robbed somebody or he killed somebody, and he's keeping their necklace in their house. It's in his safe, in his wall, in his bedroom. They go to the judge, and the judge says, really? And listens to all of it, and he's supposed to be skeptical and protect your right to privacy. But if they have enough Mm -hmm. evidence to make the judge go, I think think you're right, he did, Uh, then he issues that specific warrant. They can't just go into your business and and everything else and just look through stuff. They have to know what they're looking for and generally where it is. And if they find something else that incriminates them on can't, some other issue, you can't use it. Can't use it, okay? That's the Fourth Amendment. This is where we get warrants. This is why you can't just stop people in the streets and search them, okay? This is why America doesn't say, papers, please. You can't do that because of the Fourth Amendment. Now, we were all really drunk and stupid when we passed the Patriot Act. And in the Patriot Act, it has Section 702, and it's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. And we all talked about it at the time, and we all trusted our government at the time. Strangely, except for actual liberals, which I don't think exist anymore— and they were the ones that were saying, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. This, this will, they'll scoop Americans up into this. And we said at the time, ah, it's fine. That's yeah. not going to happen. And I said, because I was for it at the very beginning, a few weeks into it, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. th- wait, this is going to be a problem. Because I remember mm-hmm. thinking, all they have to do is just change the meaning of terrorist. Mm-hmm. If, they, if they decide a group of Americans are terrorists, we're done. And that's exactly what they've done now. So what happens is they, they get a warrantless surveillance of foreigners. We don't have to have a warrant on foreigners. So they go to the FISA court and they say, look, we're going to go listen to these people. Um, and they don't need a warrant. And they go and they listen to those people. The problem is it's a giant chain. That person, if that person is foreign and he calls somebody here in America then that person is tracked and everyone else that he talks to and everyone else that they talk to and so on and so on. And so do you remember the old uh, hair, Mm -hmm. you know, the shampoo commercial (laughs) and so Mm -hmm. on and so on and so on. And it kept dividing itself until the whole screen was just nothing but faces. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what is happening. And they are scooping up all kinds of information on you that doesn't have anything to do with terror overseas. This has got to stop. You know, when they, when they built, after 9-11, they built the Visitor's Center of Washington, D.C. What you don't know is, or may not know, is underneath the Visitor's Center, we don't even know how many floors there are underneath that. It's all top secret. You're... Your, some of your senators and some of your uh, uh, congressmen can't even get into the floors. They're top secret because they're FISA courts. We know now that the FISA courts are completely corrupt. We know that the FBI is changing the facts when they go to the court. They're cha- they've actually changed sworn testimony and no one's punished for it. We cannot allow 
Section 702 to pass. Now, there is uh, a um, amendment to the bill that has been suggested, but the bill is coming up this week. Um, the uh, GOP uh, representative, Laurel Lee of Florida, is the one who has put the amendment in, uh, titled Reforming Intelligence and Securing America Act. It would uh, reauthorize Section 702 of FISA for five years um, and aims to impose a series of revo- uh, reforms. I don't believe any of the reforms. I don't believe those will ever happen. We have given the keys to everything about us to the government, and the government has turned hostile on many Americans. So, what do we do? We have Chip on yet? We passed a rule out of committee yesterday that would include, that had a rule that said we're going to have a vote on a warrant. The problem is, is that the Speaker of the House has now come out against the warrant amendment. That is a problem because the Speaker has put his finger on the scale to shift the conversation and say publicly. What the hell is wrong with this guy? The warrant. What is wrong with him? Well, that, that's for another conversation. For the purpose of today, now, when we go to the floor in an hour and 40 minutes, We're bringing to the floor a bill under a rule that has an amendment to add the Fourth Amendment protection, the warrant protection, that we could still pass, but seems like we won't because the Speaker has put his finger on the scales. So now, since the Speaker has done that, we now have to decide whether or not we stop the whole process by killing the rule and then force it to be only reauthorized under its current form, which, of course, still wouldn't give us the protection of the warrant. But our concern is there are other amendments in this that would expand FISA in the name of going after. Oh my gosh. Right. And so like, for example, there is well-intended legislation to go after, to be able to collect data, uh, collect information relative to drug uh, trafficking like fentanyl. The problem is in the definitions about precursors and other stuff, it, it expands FISA and expands the amount of information they're collecting. You could be like look, talking about, uh, you know, an American citizen buying, uh, you know, uh, whatever cold medicine that's the precursor for making meth. So we're, we're alarmed that it's expanding FISA and we're trying to kind of run all those pieces to ground. Meanwhile, and that's all stuff that's been, uh, you know, added to it, you know, by the leadership. So now we're trying to figure out what we do with a rule here at noon. We are conflicted because the current regime doesn't have the Fourth Amendment warrant, uh, you know, a language in there. Um, obviously, we still have protections as American citizens under the Constitution. But if you don't put this provision in place, it's not as strong in terms of what we're trying to do to protect citizens. The biggest red flag in this, and I spent 15 minutes last night at the Rules Committee going back and forth with the chairman of the Intel Committee. We finally got him to admit this is inside of his bill is a carve out for congressmen. And I don't know if uh, Chip mentioned no, it. He didn't. I don't want to be Okay. <laughs> well, they're trying to tell you they've got 53 reforms in here that'll take care of all the problems. Well, the congressmen who are voting for this aren't convinced because they get a carve out. There's two carve outs in here for congressmen. Number 1, if the FBI is surveilling you using FISA, they're going into this database and searching with your name and you're a congressman and they're ostensibly doing it for your own good because they're worried about the foreign actors, they have to notify you. I ask, but only if you're a congressman, only if you're a, a senator or a U.S. representative do they have to notify you. And I ask, why did they put this in there? Well, we're afraid of political bias. I said, well, what about school boards? What, aren't you afraid of political bias there? And then, oh, by the way, does this apply to candidates or just incumbent congressmen? It only applies to incumbent congressmen. How special is that? So if there, my, my solution here would just be get a warrant, and then you don't have to put carve-outs for congressmen. And here's Correct. what's especially despicable about, despicable about the carve-out. That's to get congressmen's votes. There's at least one congressman we know, Darren LaHood, who said this publicly. He's on the Intel Committee, and he was being spied on by the Intel community. He's responsible for their oversight. So – he was worried enough about this that he insisted there be some provision. Now, his concern is legitimate. I'm not dinging him per no, se. No, no, I know. 
for asking for this, but it should be solved for everybody, not just congressmen. Tell us uh, what your your amendment actually will do. Okay, so the amendment we have is called the Fourth Amendment's Not for Sale. So uh, one of the most important ones in the bill is to get a warrant. Uh, and let's go back in the fall. The base text had getting a warrant. And uh, what does the Fourth Amendment Not for Sale do? It prevents the federal government from buying data from data brokers that they would otherwise have to get a warrant or a subpoena to obtain. So it's known as the data broker loophole. So that was in the base text. The speaker essentially worked with the Intel Committee to gut the bill of some of these important provisions. And at least the warrant requirement is going to be able to be offered as an amendment. But he basically stripped the Fourth Amendment's not for sale from even getting a vote. Uh, and part of the reason, I still remember a, you know, a longtime member of Congress, a guy named Walter Jones, uh, asked him one time when a bill was popular in the House, passed with like 420-some votes, only seven no votes, would help solve a problem, be popular with the public. Why in the world won't the Senate take this up? And he said, well, you know, I hate to be cynical, but probably because it would pass. And why would they strip this out? Well, because Dick Durbin, who's the chairman of uh, judiciary in the, in the Senate, has a similar bill in the Senate, and Ch- Chuck Schumer is a co-sponsor. So this is a, an issue that does not break on party lines. When it was offered as a standalone bill in Judiciary Committee last summer, it passed 36 to 1 through the committee. So how often did Jim Jordan and Jerry Nadler agree on something? Pretty rare. Uh, but this is one that at least this isn't a total, total party line issue like so many other things are. So uh, they're, they're stripping it out, um, and he's actually um, going around the rules to make sure that it's, it, it never makes it to the floor, is he not? Well, it doesn't make it as part of this debate, and he's offered to, uh, you know, give us a, a, va- a vote at a later time, but this is the problem. <laughs> if it's not attached to something that has to pass, like FISA, well, of course the administration wants to keep spying on Americans. They've already said that. Uh, and so if, if there is a way to pass it through the House, and even if there is a way to pass it through the Senate, the administration uh, you know, would simply veto it. And that's, that's why it really should be part of the FISA debate. That's why the Judiciary Committee had it as part of the base text of the bill uh, that essentially the Speaker reworked. What is the most effective thing people can do today? Uh, call their member of Congress, tell them to demand that uh, their member votes for a warrant requirement, and ask them to say we should be voting on the Fourth Amendment's not for sale. The government shouldn't be circumventing the warrant requirement uh, to buy data that they would otherwise have to get a warrant. They don't want the warrant requirement in the first place, but in the event that should pass, in a lot of ways they're saying, well, it's not as consequential because we can just buy our way around it. 